it's an old book bookshop i can't say the word today <laughs> it's not happening but i said it yesterday to my friend hello my loves and thank you for joining me it's kirsten and we are going book shopping clearly as the title said but i am going book shopping with one of my friends and i'm very excited because we are going to lewis everyone keeps telling me it's pronounced lewis I'll put it up here in case I'm wrong, but that's the pronunciation we're going with because I've said lose and people keep correcting me to Lewis. Regardless, there's meant to be loads of bookshops there and that's why I'm going because there is meant to be five bookshops plus some nice places to eat lunch at. So this is going to be absolutely amazing. I need to go and get ready but you are of course coming along with me as we go exploring in these different bookshops and seeing what books we manage to pick up. If you don't know because you haven't been here before I have a rule that if I'm going to an independent bookshop for the first time I do try and buy at least one book from there just to support them and just to have a memento from that bookshop. Yes it's weird, yes it's unnecessary but I love it. So that's the plan. We're going to see how many books I end up with today. Both of me and my friend love going around like charity shops and stuff so we'll probably be doing that if there's some good charity shops there as well. So it's just going to be a fun day so please do stick around. I hope you enjoy and I will catch up with you at the end of the day with whatever I manage to get.
it is the next day uh, but I was way too tired yesterday to actually wrap up this video I didn't get back home till half past seven in the evening and I have been out the house since like 20 to 9 ish, 10, quarter to 9 ish in the morning. It was a really long day. I enjoyed it, but the traveling down there, we were delayed by about 30 minutes. Traveling back home also delayed. So it was just, it was really long. Ended up being traveling wise, but I did have a good time. So when we first got to Lewis, we went, it's all uphill. So be prepared for some exercise. <laughs> and we went to Boone Books first and I really liked this shop. It was absolutely beautiful and cozy. Like it was a small shop, but it went quite far back and all the walls were filled from like floor to ceiling of books. It was so unusual there. And all of the books were really, really cheap. So at first I thought they were second hand. But they weren't, they're actually, Boone Books is an independent bookshop that specialises in selling books that are leftovers from publishers or returns to other shops and stuff that they're just not selling. And so they get them at discounted price, meaning they can sell them on an extremely discounted price. There were so many amazing books there and I was really tempted to get, honestly, quite a lot. I didn't mainly because I kept thinking to myself there are more bookshops here that I want to go to and I don't want to spend all my money in this shop as much as I can get loads and loads of books for a really good price and then have to lug them around all day long. I was like no let me just be good. So I ended up getting just one book but I do kind of wish that I got one of those um, blind book date books because uh, that would have been really fun I think but I was just a bit nervous because I'm just like what if I don't like it or I'm not interested and stuff like I always am like too much of a control freak for that so I didn't but I wish I did because it was only three pounds for a book like you just come on you can't go wrong with that but no I didn't I was also really really tempted with they had some of these like cloth bound classics and they were beautiful and they were only five pounds really really tempted but two things put me off. One was my friend reminded me that I don't need loads of the same book, which was very good of her to do this. And two, they're cloth bound. And the problem that I have with the cloth bound books is that the cloth part of it is just going to get tatty after a while, or at least that's what I always think. And I know that that's really going to annoy me like really going to annoy me. That's why with the English library editions I go for the paperback ones and not the cloth bound ones because it just, the thought of that just ugh, annoys me so much. But these editions were so beautiful inside them. They had like a map of the area that the book was based in. They had information about the author and stuff and it was all in colour and really beautiful. Part of me wishes I got one but at the same time that fear of them not staying in a pristine condition because for those they are a collector's item for me it's not something I would have read out of I was just like no I just can't do it but I did get The Italian by Anne Radcliffe and this is a book that I've been intrigued by now I have to admit the book I want by Anne Radcliffe is The Mysteries of Yodofo which is the book that kind of inspired Jane Austen's Northanger Abbey and is referenced so much in that book so I really want to read that one however Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin also recently read all of the Jane Austen books and he said in his video how he liked The Mysteries of Udolfo but he thinks The Italian is a better book because he studied Anne Radcliffe at like university or something and he loves Anne Radcliffe's works but does recommend The Italian. I'm gonna read both but when I saw this one in the shop it was literally brand new, three pounds, beautiful book and I was thinking actually this is going to be a really good place to start because Mysteries of Udolfo is, is much bigger, much bigger than this and I was like this is a good place for me just to get used to her writing, see how I feel about it and then when I find Mysteries of Udolfo I can then read that one and so this one just feels less intimidating which is a trick that I tend to use with a lot of authors that have massive books and also smaller ones as I will read the small ones and just see and get a feel for their writing and then I go into the big one knowing what I'm in for. But yeah, so I only got this one but I was so tempted to get so many others. They had so many unusual editions as well, just editions that you wouldn't normally see and I, yeah, it was lovely. I could have like bought about 10 books there. I was, I was so tempted. 
but I didn't. I restrained myself. And then we kind of walked down into the town where there was loads of charity shops. You do have your water stones, which I didn't actually film in and I didn't get any books from. I was looking for the English Library edition of Bram Stoker's Dracula because I've been on the hunt for that one just can't seem to find it anywhere they didn't have it either so that was a bit disappointing the layout of the water stones there is it's actually really small and their calf is really unusual because the seating arrangement for it is kind of dotted around the store and so you'll just find this random chair and tables with people sat down having a coffee just surrounded by the shelves of books and I thought that was really good I really should have just filmed some footage in there but I just decided not to I was really more there about the independent bookshops more than anything else but yeah it was it was really nice honestly the rest of this this side of the town that we went down was just filled with antique shops like if you like antiques Lewis is the place to go there are so many antique shops me and my friend did go into them but we're both a little bit clumsy and so it was a bit like you know these antique shops are packed every spare inch of space has something on it and it's all really expensive so we went into like one and then we were like it may, maybe maybe we'll stay away from that but there is so many like loads and loads in there like stacks um one of the bookshops i did want to go into was closed unfortunately so i couldn't go in there and they did have a big children's bookshop right at the very end of their high street which we didn't go into because neither me or my friend read much children middle grade books like it's just it's not our thing but we did go to a lovely lunch place down at that end it's actually tucked away behind another antique store like Honestly, it's probably about six antique stores down this one high street bit. But it was a really, really lovely calf. We got to sit outside. It was all outside seating arrangements and the weather was beautiful. It didn't rain at all. It was so warm and just sunshine everywhere. It was, it was lovely. And honestly, the food was really good and a really decent price. So that was a lovely little break. We then walked back up the high street and the other end because when you come out of the station bit you walk up and then you've got a choice of going right or left so we went right and down this time we carried on to the other part not that you needed to know that anyway um so we went into all the different charity shops that we found because we both like doing that and there was another bookstore that we saw which is bow window books which was a more anti care honestly i said the word yesterday it's an old book bookshop I can't say the word today. <laughs> it's not happening. But I said it yesterday to my friend. But it was beautiful. Like they had all the first editions of different things. Like it was sort of lovely to go in and have a little look around. But obviously didn't get any books from there. There was another bookshop but that was closed as well. That one was only open on a Saturday or Sunday. And I'm really sorry for the lighting that's going in and out. It's a very cloudy day. Yeah, so we didn't go in there, but we did go to this lovely little park, like garden area. It was so beautiful. I felt like I was Alice in Wonderland. Like it was so, so beautiful. And it was really needed as well because this point in the day we were both getting really hot, really flustered. And so we got an ice cream and just sat down underneath a tree and just chatted and it was so lovely and we probably just sat there for about a good hour or so cooling off having a good chat it was really really enjoyable and then on the way back up we went to a couple more charity shops and then finished up at a plant shop but one of the charity shops I did find Ken Follett's The Pillars of the Earth this is not a book I normally would get however a colleague at work has been going on about this book ever since he found out that I read <laughs> and that, that was a while ago but he was just like you need to read Ken Follett he's like his books are amazing when he was talking about it one of the other colleagues was there and she agreed and they got to talking about it a lot and so I was like okay fine I will keep an eye out if I ever see Ken Follett books in a charity shop or something I will pick it up and give it a try what I didn't realize was the size <laughs> it's over a thousand pages long i'm pretty sure there's a setup here going on like are you kidding me it's ginormous however it does sound really really good this is a historical fiction book it's about a devout and resourceful monk driven to build the greatest gothic cathedral the world has ever known. The mason who becomes his architect, a man divided in his soul, of the beautiful elusive Lady Alina, haunted by the secret shame, and of a struggle between good and evil that will turn church against state, brother against brother. A spell word in epic tale of ambition, anarchy, and absolute power, set against the sprawling medieval canvas of 12th century England. This is Kevin, this is Ken Follett's classic historical masterpiece. I mean, it does, it sounds absolutely amazing. 
but it's so massive. <laughs> it's huge. I did not expect that. I will get round to reading this at some point. I'm also terrified of it because it's huge and it's actually really heavy as well. I was not expecting that. I just realised, I read the back of this one, but I have not said what the Italian's about, mainly because I don't actually know what it's about. First published in 1797 with its, oh, okay, it's got a villain, an intense romance and its sublime depiction of landscape is the masterpiece of gothic fiction. So we have an evil monk. Evil monks seem to be like a really prominent thing back in history because I've read so many classic books where the villain is a monk. Okay, so the Italian celebrates the heroic struggle of love in the face of malice and deceit. I, I want to know more, but why is it always an evil monk? Question mark there. But we then, as I said, the last shop we went into was actually this plant shop slash home shop. Beautiful, amazingly cool in there. It was so good, but they had loads and loads of plants and both me and my friend are quite big plant people. Like we love them. And I have been after Apothos for a little while, also known as Devil's Ivy, and they had one. And I was thinking, oh, but I've got to get this all the way back to London. Like, I don't know how to do this and stuff. And then my friend who was actually being very much like to me constantly, like, do you need that book? When we were in Boon Books, she was very good at keeping me controlled and sticking to my one book per shop. When it came to plants, however, she was very much like, get it, get it. So I got it. And it's so cute. This one, I don't normally keep them in pots anymore. I've actually taken them all out, but I have a little hanging thing for the window. And so I'm thinking to put that in the window because it looks amazing. It's quite small at the minute, but I've been told that they grow really, really quickly and they're meant to be really easy to look after. So I'm, only reason why it's not already hanging in the window is because I wanted to show you guys. But yeah, this is, I'm so excited with it. I, I've realised that I actually like ivy style plants the most. And I think that is because I like the fact that they can hang down off my bookshelves and stuff. Like it just, I really like them. Um, so yeah, so that was the day. Honestly, not a massive book buying day. Part of that was my fault because I didn't check what stores would be open because there was two stores that we could have gone into that were closed. And then you did have the bookshop that sold old books, because I still can't say that word, Waterstones, WH Smiths, which does technically sell books, but it's not a proper like bookstore on its own. And then Boon Books, a children's bookstore. So there is a lot there, but I just think, because I was going for just the independent books, the only one really that I bought anything out was Boon Books. However, if you like antiques or you just like looking around charity shops or things like that, or even just a beautiful day out, because like the castle there is lovely, you've got the house of Anne of Cleves, like there's so much to do there, then I would recommend. It was a lovely, lovely little town with its cobbled streets and everything. So I do recommend. It wasn't quite the bookshopping day that I expected, but I still had a really good time. I really, really did enjoy myself and you know what I got two books and I spent five pounds on books I'm I'm still shocked at myself for that because that that's really impressive normally I spend a lot more than that so <laughs> I'm really really pleased with the day I hope you've enjoyed this video and just this little look around somewhere different in the UK just to have a little look let me know have you ever been to Lewis is it somewhere that you want to go to now honestly if it wasn't for a TikTok video I never would have even known that Lewis was a place which is terrible but true <laughs> I'm pleased I had a good time but I have chatted for long enough so I'm going to stop now if you have made it this far then let's put a plant emoji in the comments for my lovely little devil's ivy okay we're gonna leave it there we're gonna stop rambling so if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it that thumbs up, subscribe, comment to let me know that you're here. Social media links will be linked below and I will of course catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.